तो या हेलो आई वेलकम यू ऑल टुडे वी हैव विद अस अ सब्जेक्ट एक्सपर्ट ऑफ आर सीएल फॉर स्टेम प्रोजेक्ट सी विल बी स्पेसिफिकली फोकसिंग ऑन द मैथ पार्ट मैथ सब्जेक्ट पार्ट ऑफ सीएल फॉर स्टेम प्रोजेक्ट सो आई वेलकम यू डॉक्टर रुचि कुमार या थैंक यू जीनत या so this is in continuation with our previous recordings where we spoke to professor mathli and then we also spoke to our science team so uh, and today we will be focusing on math so uh, i will uh, so we have several uh, components of uh, conceptual framework of uh, cl first time project so i will first ask you uh, ruchi can you elaborate about the subject matter knowledge aspect of uh, the conceptual framework yeah uh thank you zinat thanks for the opportunity to uh, speak to everyone so about the subject matter knowledge of mathematics it is the knowledge of uh, mathematical uh, concepts procedures you know which almost um, everyone who has studied mathematics as a subject in school is expected to have and this may be related to uh, certain procedures which are taught in school like a cross multiplication methods how to solve um, algebraic uh, equation uh, you know what we call as transposition or uh, subtracting uh, seven from both sides uh these all constitute the subject matter knowledge of mathematics and uh, so it uh, constitutes school uh, mathematical uh, knowledge school mathematics as well as the disciplinary uh, mathematics uh, that is generated uh, through research and uh, through uh, writing research papers okay thank you ruchi so uh, next i would like to know another very important component of the conceptual framework which is the nature of uh, the subject or nature of mathematics in this case yeah so in terms of the nature of uh, mathematics uh, you know besides the concepts and the mathematical objects uh, the uh, mathematics has its own structures its own properties and as we uh, the kind of properties like commutativity associativity distributivity and uh, these properties they uh, have give a, a certain flavor to uh, mathematics uh, objects and uh, procedures so we know that in natural numbers the uh, uh, commutativity for uh, uh, addition is there you know and uh, uh, multiplication is also there but if we see fractions whether uh, the commutativity for uh, 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 addition uh, remains or not is something for the students to explore again whether it remains for uh, whether it is there for subtraction also commutativity in um, natural numbers and in fractions that is something uh, again uh, for students to explore and uh, these are the properties that you know form the basis for uh, mathematical uh, knowledge uh, so we know that you know the commutativity per, will remain for uh, uh, addition in both natural numbers as well as in fractions and it will not uh, be there for subtraction but uh, we need to even go beyond that we need to think about the processes that are uh, required to generate these mathematical um, uh, concepts these math uh, this mathematical knowledge itself and these processes involve uh, most importantly uh, abstraction so even a number 1 involves abstraction because we are uh, you know it can be one apple one banana one uh, uh, you know one phone but when we are representing it as one and by it can be either by a symbol or by a verbal uh, you know uh, word that we are saying or a written word o n e that we are saying these all are very abstract entities and students need to make connection from concrete uh, representations in the world to these abstract entities similarly for fractions so we know that from natural numbers to fractions the symbolization changes and how the meaning of these symbol changes across mathematics is something for students to uh, you know uh, understand and to develop meaning of these symbols itself uh, how we define each of these concepts is also uh, something that is uh, you know interesting for students to explore because uh, you know the definitions it's not something which is given in the textbook itself but it is something that the students can develop 
based on their own understanding and knowledge in the classroom through discussion uh, with the, their peers as well as with the teachers. Uh, all these, you know, uh, correspondence with the, you know, reality, uh, it may make uh, students feel that, you know, mathematics is something which is derived, uh, you know, which is based in reality, mathematics is out there. But ultimately, you know, they need to also understand that mathematical, math mathematical concepts are very idealized in nature. So, you know, uh, line that we are uh, uh, talking about in geometry, it, uh, uh, you know, it uh, is uh, considered to be infinitely uh, long or, uh, you know, uh, doesn't have any length or uh, doesn't have any breadth. But uh, when we draw a line on a paper, it can be, you know, it cannot be infinitely uh, uh, extended and it has a certain breadth if you uh, measure it uh, properly so but in mathematics we idealize it because it, you know it's a, it's a kind of a mathematical world where we construct um, mathematical ideas and it is also something important for, for uh, students to understand and these idealized ideas help uh, you know uh, mathematics to work in different contexts because uh, that's what uh, you know uh, helps in making generalizations uh, generalizations which are um, uh, which work across uh, different contexts and different um, uh, you know number systems also uh, in some cases so for example we know that uh, a mathematics uh, uh, mathematical facts which are universally true like 2 plus 3 is 5 we know that it, everywhere it is because everyone has accepted that what 2 means what three means and what does it mean to uh, say two plus three and uh, you know uh, therefore we can generalize that two plus three is uh, five and lastly uh, the process which is important most important in mathematics is the proof uh, the deductive process of arriving at uh, the mathematical truths based on previously uh, established uh, statements and uh, it, the students not only you know need to understand the proof but also the need for proof too often we focus on the uh, uh, proof itself how to write the proof itself when students feel that you know uh, why do we even need to engage in this process when it is already written out there somewhere so uh, somewhere we need to focus on the need for proof itself Thank you, Ruchi. Like you elaborated each aspect of the nature of mathematics and with so many beautiful and uh, simple examples to understand. So from this, we would like to move to uh, the another very important component of uh, or component of our conceptual framework, which is the PCK or pedagogical content knowledge. So in that we have, uh, as we uh, heard, even in our last videos, we have components like instructional strategies, students' misconception and difficulties, uh, representation of the content. So would you like to elaborate about uh, all these aspects, also context of learning or curriculum knowledge? Like, uh, yeah, because I think there may be some overlaps uh, or if you miss some components, I'll come back to it. But uh, yeah, I would like to elaborate, yeah. Yeah, thank you. So uh, moving on to the pedagogical content knowledge, it's a knowledge where uh, the understanding of both pedagogy as well as the mathematical content is sort of uh, brought together. Uh, it's an amalgam of that. So I would like to take an example for that. Uh, for example, in teaching of uh, proportions in perhaps middle school, uh, we are already aware of uh, methods like, you know, we teach cross multiplication, we teach unitary method. And uh, there is also another uh, approach, another strategy called unitizing. Okay, so uh, what, you know, what is what, which method would be appropriate for a group of student? At what stage would that method be appropriate for that uh, group of students is something uh, that the teacher needs to decide. And what helps the teacher to decide this uh, effectively is the pedagogical content knowledge. So if we take this example that, you know, the 12 seats, uh, 12 suites uh, cost rupees uh, 32. Okay, so what would uh, 15 suites cost? So if we take this as an example, we can solve it using cross multiplication. We can uh, try solving it using unitary method also. Uh, but 
if you look at the numbers uh, carefully, you will see that you know uh, this uh, twelve seat, uh, twelve suites can be considered in uh, you know uh, groups of four. Okay, if you consider that in groups of uh, sorry, if you consider them in groups of three, you will see that there are uh, four groups of three. Uh, that makes these 12 seats. And similarly, if you consider the rupees 32 uh, or currency 32, you can again divide it into four parts and each part would be eight. So eight plus eight plus eight plus eight, okay? So now we know that three suites correspond to eight uh, currency or rupees. So at this point, all that we need is, you know, uh, uh, the cost of 15 suites. So therefore, we know that we just need to add this eight to the original quantity, uh, original uh, price, that is 32 rupees. So we were saying that, you know, 12, C 12 suites cost 32 currency, and we have already found out uh, that three suites correspond to eight rupees, okay? So if we add this eight, uh, rupees to 32 will get 40. And here we are getting on the other side, it's 15 suites. So we can see these 15 suites again, if we take it in groups of three, how many groups of three are there? So we can see uh, three, then three more six, then three more nine, then three more 12, then three more 15. So there are five groups here, which correspond to 15. And similarly, we are adding eight also uh, five times to get 40. Now, if the, this is a method of unitizing and grouping, which can, uh, which students intuitively use to uh, solve these uh, problems of proportion. And it is a perfectly valid method, but it is not often uh, focused in the teaching of mathematics. And it might be very useful methods to focus initially when we are trying to discuss the proportion itself. It is also a very useful method when, you know, unitary method might not work. If you try to find the cost of uh, one suite here, you might have to do very tedious uh, calculations here. But it is this, uh, you know, this becomes very simple if you consider three suites as a unit and to find out the corresponding cost of that itself. So one has to find out which is the unit, which is the most appropriate one in different situations, in different contexts to make this kind of thinking work, okay? And, but uh, often it is not focused in the classroom. It is uh, the, the strategies that students use in their daily life that is not given an opportunity uh, to uh, share in the classroom itself. So pedagogical content knowledge involves um, acknowledging and recognizing that this is a valid strategy and allowing students to express these strategies in the classroom, allowing students to develop these kind of strategies in the classroom. Uh, we can see that, you know, uh, another important concept underlying this is that, you know, the unit may never uh, correspond to just one uh, you know, one melon or one orange or one rupee itself. The unit can also be a composite unit. The composite unit may consist of these three, uh, you know, circles as we see, which can be corresponding to uh, three rotis combined into a, a, a one unit, three biscuits in a packet, uh, uh, which we can call as a one unit. Um, and so this one biscuit may correspond to one third of the earlier unit. And if we want to uh, consider half unit, then it would be one and a half biscuits. So the students need to develop this flexibility of working with different types of unit, not just singular units, but also composite units, which develop their facility to work with uh, different kinds of quantities and also with fractions as well as proportions. Another example in geometry itself is, you know, often we uh, rely on memorizing formulas and applying them. But if you see uh, CL4 STEM uh, geometry module, uh, there we have focused on how uh, the shape, the transformation of shapes can help you to understand the derivation of formulas. It will, you know, uh, give you a great insight into 
how the formulas itself are developed and why what is the um, invariance in terms of area uh, when you transform the shape what changes and what does not changes so these concepts are uh, important uh, for teachers to focus on and these strategies uh, help the students to understand these uh, concepts better these are the I, these are some of the example of the pedagogical content knowledge and they help to address the misconceptions that the students might be having about these uh, uh, important uh, concepts itself Thank yeah you. yeah i think you covered uh three more very important aspects like you talk about instructional strategies you gave some representations for uh, fractions and uh, different units and uh, i think also uh, about the topic of geometry uh, it, this representation could be very uh, important and uh, very easy for students to understand that uh, the area is preserved here so uh, next i would I just also wanted to make one more point here you know the in terms of representations it is very important to establish the connection but across different types of uh, representation so when i was speaking about you know the verbal word one and the written symbol one and uh, you know even the counting uh, one uh, uh, maybe orange or a melon so all these things have to be connected together for the student to make meaning and in here here also in terms of fractions or in terms of proportions all these concepts whether it is a written word whether it is verbal uh, whether it is uh, pictorial whether it is a mathematical symbol all these things have to be connected to each other to make sense for students yeah yeah thank you ruchi for uh, reiterating this point and uh, like now i would like you to mention something about the context for learning since this project will be implemented in several countries and uh, maybe after that a uh, little bit about the curricular knowledge of a sure. topic yeah sure. so uh, you know context is very much uh, important and uh, in mathematics we uh, you know tend to believe that you know uh, mathematics uh, will work irrelevant of the context itself so you know uh, here when i was talking of this example of sweets and uh, uh, rupees uh, if the same example is taken across different countries um, uh, perhaps people will be able to make sense but perhaps it might be confusing for someone because i have used rupees as the currency so uh, it is easier for students as well as teachers to understand if the currency mentioned is something that they relate to and therefore in our uh, uh, in our modules we have uh, try to try to take extreme care that the currency mentioned is of the particular country itself and in terms of the sweet also i have uh, written her sweet in indian context it can be ladu in in, in a bhutan context or uh, tanzania or uh, nigeria it might be a very uh, different kind of thing that the students might uh you know might be liking to eat and uh, they can mention that so these things help the students to relate mathematics with their uh, daily life and uh, uh, if there are contexts which are completely unfamiliar for example if we have bullet train uh, context um, where uh, we are talking to a, a rural uh, child who has never even seen a train then it might be a very difficult Uh, uh situation for the student to understand and therefore we need to try to uh, uh, uh you know uh, uh, help the student understand mathematics by taking contexts which are more relatable to them with uh, the context through which they can identify uh with that is what uh, i think is important in mathematics teaching yeah thank you ruchi for elaborating the context aspect uh, in uh, like learning and in uh, like building on the pedagogical content knowledge uh, another last thing is the curricular knowledge and how relevant it is uh, with respect to pedagogical content knowledge yeah yeah so i think i would like to take this uh, concept map that we have in proportions module to illustrate this uh, aspect uh you know uh, curricular knowledge forms a very important aspect of pedagogical uh, content knowledge whatever pedagogy a teachers adopt in the classroom she has to think uh, you know not only 
uh, how the concept is going to be uh, useful for the student, what are the important uh, ideas in daily life that one can use to illustrate this concept. The teacher also has to think about, you know, what are the concepts students have learned previously, which can be used to uh, build a base for the, uh, the concept itself. For example, if you're trying to teach proportions, uh, you can use students' understanding of fractions, decimal, and percentage to build the understanding, okay? And you can take examples of these uh, contexts where fractions is there, percentage is there to uh, develop the uh, understanding of proportions itself. Uh, similarly, the teacher also has to think of concepts that students will learn in higher classes going ahead when one is teaching that. So in uh, context of proportions, we know that they are, they are going to study geometry uh, similarity in the higher grades. And uh, so when you are teaching proportions, if you focus only on the uh, uh, you know, uh, quantities and calculations and do not focus on area at all, uh, then they might uh, find it difficult to connect this concept of uh, proportions when they are studying uh, similarity. So, the curricular knowledge is very much important in uh, giving shape to the pedagogical content knowledge, giving shape to, to the pedagogy that the teacher uh, uses in the classroom. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, yeah, for, for uh, like actually elaborating this point with this example. And uh, I'm hopeful that our viewers and teacher educators will understand these aspects more uh, clearly after uh, watching this video. So thank you again. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Zenith, for giving this opportunity. I wish all the best to the teachers and uh, viewers who are watching this video and hope uh, that you have a fruitful uh, math teaching and learning. Thank you.